Tonight, the exclusive interview three years in the making. The one person who knew Michael Jackson better than anybody else, his mother, Catherine. Every morning, every, all through the day, I think about Michael. Catherine Jackson speaks out on Michael's childhood. So Michael looked back at those times and he said he was abused. Well, they call it abuse, but um, sometime if it wasn't for the strap, what would this world be like today? On what he missed. Did you ever hope that he would find true love? I always thought about that, but um, Michael seemed happy. He found a lot of joy in his children. On the talent that Michael hid from the world. Michael loved art a lot. He loved paintings, he loved watercolors, he loved even the crayons. And her explosive theory about Comrade Murray. He did a terrible thing, and it might have been others involved. I don't know that, but I feel that. Catherine Jackson, an extraordinary hour. The Piers Morgan interview starts now. Tonight, an extraordinary look at Michael Jackson's private life through his deeply personal artwork. He started drawing when he was a child. The pictures offer new revelations about the iconic singer. Much of it is kept in a secret location at an airport hangar in Los Angeles. Some of it is here in the studio with me tonight. Joining me now in an exclusive interview is Michael's mother, Catherine Jackson, and his mentor and good friend, artist Brett Livingston Strong. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you. you. We're surrounded by this incredible art, uh, most of which has never been seen that your son Michael uh, did. What I'm struck by, I love this picture, Catherine, which is, how old is he there, Michael? He's about nine or ten there. And he's clutching his own work of art. He painted yes, that. Yes, yes. I don't know what's more impressive, the art or the fantastic hat he's wearing. <laughs> Very stylish. But clearly, from an early age, he loved art. Tell me about that side of Michael. Uh, Michael loved art a lot. He, um, he, would, he loved paintings, he loved watercolors. He loved even um, <clears throat> the crayons, and um, he would always draw. And when he was even in uh, school, he he would draw pictures, and they took one of his drawings and put it on the front of the yearbook. And uh, <laughs> was he self-taught? Did he teach himself? He taught himself. It Amazing just, talent. Um, just a talent that he had, and um, I can't say too much more about him. Only his father. His father was an artist, too. Mm. He loved to paint and draw. So I thought maybe he might have picked it up from him, but he had a natural talent for it. Michael did. And did he always paint? I mean, throughout his life, was he always painting secretly without people really being aware of it? Yes, yes. Because when he was just a child, um, when we moved uh, to Havenhurst, before we remodeled, it had a little house in the back, and he took that little house and he made it out to a, out of an art studio for himself. <clears throat> what, do, what do you think the art brought him, painting and stuff? What did it give him? Uh, well, you know what? I really don't, I really can't answer that question, but sometimes when he's not doing anything, he would go and start painting, and I think that just, it's a way of him just relaxing. Mm. A bit of escapism. Yes. Brett, you, you got to know Michael 25 years ago. Tell me about how you met, and tell me about this art collection, because it's something that people don't really know much about. Right. Well, he, uh, we first met about 1979 through uh, Mayor Bradley of Los Angeles and also through Lawrence Welk, two different occasions. And the first time that I had a chance to talk to Michael, uh, he says, now, you're a sculptor. And I said, uh, yes, well, what type of sculptor? And I said, I build monuments. And he goes, wow, I've never, I've never met a monument builder before. And I said to him, thinking, well, I know who Michael is, but I said, well, what do you do, Michael? And he says, Oh, I, I love life. And I always remember that. He said, I love life. And I said, wow, that's a great job. I love life, too. And he says, uh, I, I'm an artist, too, and I, I like to draw things that inspire my life. And, uh, and this collection, how many pieces are there in it? Well, I have, or we have, um, 98 mm. pieces. Other people have, have some. And there's about, maybe there's about 20 of those pieces I draw he did artwork on the other side. Mm. I made the paper for Michael in the 1980s, special paper, so if anybody got it, they couldn't, you know, counterfeit it. And so uh, he, we ran, he ran out of the paper, that's why he started doing artwork on the reverse I side. I mean, some of the pieces here, I mean, yeah. the Martin Luther King picture, Abraham Lincoln, apparently he painted a lot of, drew a lot of, a lot of former presidents. Well, he, he loved to do that. He loved Abraham Lincoln. He loved freedom. He loved the whole aspect of of people being free, artists being able to create 
you know, beautiful things to inspire people like he wanted to, you know, create his music. And Catherine, he had a, a strange obsession with the number seven and yes. with chairs. Now, tell me why those two things well, recur in, in the pictures all the time. Well, um, Michael was the seventh child. Mm. Uh, he, 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 um, his name had seven letters in it. He would always talk about that. And, you know, seven, the number seven is, it means completeness. completeness. Mm. And um, in the Bible, it tells us. So, um, so it was like a lucky number for him. For him. Um, I, and what about the chairs? Why did he like drawing or painting chairs? He just had an obsession of chairs. The chairs that, um, just not just a plain chair, but chairs that, uh, you see, had a lot of art in it. Mm. A lot of curves, a lot of other things like that. And he would draw. There's one, there's one very prophetic picture, which is of a little boy sitting on his own in a corner. And we're just seeing it now on screen. What's so poignant is that Michael had written next to this in his own handwriting, Before you judge me, try hard to love me, look within your heart, then ask, have you seen my childhood? What do you think he meant by that, Catherine? You know what? I couldn't tell you. But that is the picture. I have one, too, like that. Are they showing it on TV? Yes. We're looking at it now, yeah. And it's, yes. it, I mean, it's a very, I mean, the boy looks, I guess... He looks sad and he looks... You know, I think it's because Michael always said he missed most of his childhood. Yeah. And he loved to run and play. He loved children. And I think this is what this picture stands for. I mean, I've interviewed a lot of people about Michael. Many of your, your family, your children. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed Janet, Latoya, you know, Jermaine... Um, also the same thing, that Michael was such a happy child, he, mm. he loved just playing pranks on people and all that kind yeah. of thing. Do you ever feel the regret as his mother that he did lose the childhood really to superstardom? I mean, if you had your time again, would you want the kids, especially Michael, to go into that crazy world? Well, to a certain extent, um, none of my children really but just loose, because mm. my husband was sort of, um, I should say, very strict about mm. things like that, because where we came from, there was a lot of crime, mm. and um, we cared about our children. We didn't want them out there in the street running around, breaking in cars and doing like, like most of the children did back then. Mm. And we did things with them in the house, and that's when they started the singing. But um, as far as having a good time and all, they were in the little league and things like that. Mm. And then they learned to play the music. And Michael always said he didn't have a childhood, but he enjoyed what he was doing. Mm. I think that's true, isn't it? I mean, you talked about his father being, being tough with them. Was he too tough or not, do you think? Did he, did he have to be that tough? Um, I didn't think he was too tough. But in, back in those days, everybody raised their children about the same. Mm. If you did something wrong, it was terribly wrong, you got a scolding for it and you also got a licking, as they called it. Mm. For it. But today you can't do that. So Michael looked back at those times and he said he was abused. Well, they call it abuse, but um, sometime if it wasn't for the strap, how, what would this world be like today? Do you think that the world has gone a bit soft in terms of discipline? I think discipline? it's gone a bit too soft. I really do, and then they have too much things out there for our children to do, and they're, they're too open with a lot of things, so <clears throat> things that we weren't open years ago about, mm. and um, I just feel bad because I know that the world is, I think it's doomed. Do you? Um, the Bible tells us the world would be destroyed, so I think I mean, when you look at America, modern America now, where do you think people are going wrong, especially in bringing up children? Well, um, I think society is sometimes is the fault of it because they tell the children to call 911. And in some cases, um, maybe they need to do that. Mm. But um, in some cases, some people, some parents are afraid of their children. Mm. And some children tell their parents, well, if you do this to me, I'm going to call 911 or I'm going to call the police or whatever the children care. So what are the parents to do? Well, it's interesting. When I talk to your children, all of them have said at various stages of their lives, well, we had these really tough upbringing and our father was really strict. But they've all, as they've got older, 
and in some cases had their own kids, they'd begun to realize that maybe it was the kind of tough love that they needed. It's been interesting for me to talk to them now they're a bit older. Mm -hmm. It must be, for you, it must be an interesting experience too to hear their views change as they get older. They do. Children change. Uh, for instance, Tito, he was one of them that said, <coughs> excuse me, that said, um, I'm going to raise my children just like, they call their father Joseph, mm -hmm. just like Joseph raised me. Because he always said, my children don't get in trouble or anything like that. Mm -hmm. All these terrible things, they, they are laid on Michael. He didn't do these things. But um, it's just, they're wicked people out there, and they accuse you of them. But, um, it must have, been, <clears throat> must have been very hurtful for you as his mother. Oh, my Some yes. of the things that Michael was accused of, the, the court cases he had to fight and so on. Mm -hmm. How did you feel as his mother? Oh, my gosh. It, it almost destroyed me in a way, you know, when I say it just hurt. Because I know Michael didn't do those terrible things. Mm. But then to I say, there are so many wicked people. Why are they doing this to him? Just to hold that thought for a moment, Catherine. When we come back, I want to talk to you about Michael's life and what his legacy should be. <laughs>